Hello and welcome to Flory Models Daily Show. Here we are on Friday the 18th of October 2019. After what has been a very, very busy week to be honest. Cracking on with loads of different stuff at the moment. Uh, for me personally today, I've been plunging ahead with the actual Sabre. Uh, which to be honest, we've started on the deckling phase as we can see. And I must admit, I do love it with the blue. The metal works really, really works on this one. It's a little bit shiny at the moment, but I'm sure we'll knock it back during the weathering process. You can see just about to start on the underside, going through the motions of getting ready with this one. Uh, but generally really nice, apart from up here at the front, because it's all one decal. So I've had to come in and there's the offending item, which we've just scalpeled out. Uh, so we've got that one out of the way now. Uh, so pretty much few decals to go on this one, get the other walkway on the other side, flip over, then lots and lots of little decals all over it. And we can actually make our way through with this one. So this gets you bang up to date so available for members right now obviously you've got part five of this which covers all the metal finish work how we went about doing the different ones how to be using extreme metals it's pretty much in depth but keeping it as simple as possible to have this beautiful finish onto it which i actually very very happy with I think this is possibly my best natural metal finish for ages. And to be honest with you, I've been wanting to do this kit now for eons, absolutely eons. Uh, but for one reason or another, it's got sideline and put back. And I really am glad because it's giving me the opportunity to do exactly what I wanted to do. Natural metal finish on an aircraft. We're gonna be doing a little bit of weathering on this one going through the motions of really bringing it to life and alive and also talking about the problems that we have and a lot of us do about obviously carrier film with natural metal finishes using things like MRP's metal finishes and everybody else's you, it shows through you know you can see that carrier film so we talk about why that happens and all the different areas and how to get rid of it so forth and so on but it's looking the part. She's really coming together. I'm a little bit behind where I wanted to be. I really wanted to get it deckled and sealed today, but I don't want to rush it. So what we'll probably do is spend a little bit of time just making sure that these decals are you know, snuggling down nicely, not getting any sort of you know film marks or anything else like that onto this one. So then when we do get the actual sealer onto it, it's going down the best possible way. Then we can get on with some oils and really bring it together. But really, I think by next week, this one will be totally finished and we'll be making our way on with the next build. But it has been a lot of fun with this particular one and all those nice things about natural metal finishes and why we love about them and how we like to use them are really coming to fruition with this particular build so it has been a lot of fun anyway part five of that is ready for you right now it's up on the site you can go off and catch up with all about that one on this week as well, we've been using this one, which I think we've now come to the conclusion, we're going to call it the Book Missile System, even though it is an SA-11 or 17, if I remember rightly, depending on which missile's on it. But this has come together absolutely fantastic. Again, I know I hit on, you know, Ming a little bit, because it has got a few little flashy problems, and it does seem to be the injection, uh, either the ports going in or the ejector pins seem to be making flash. So, you know, there's a little bit of problems and little tiny fit issues, but if you look at them literally as they come off the sprue and clean them up, you won't have any problems. There's no actual fit issues with the parts. It's just little bits of flash from the injector pins, I think, and obviously injector ports are getting in the way of various things on this one. So make you know, make sure they're cleaned up and really you're not gonna have a problem with it. But she's really coming together. So I think by Monday, when I think it's part three, we'll be up you on Monday, we should have the missiles onto it by then and we'll be really looking the part for coming through. So hopefully by next week on this one again, We'll be thinking about actually getting some primer onto it perhaps even the base colors things like that and making our way through but i really am enjoying this one normally i do armor or armor personnel carriers it's not often i get involved in the equipment shall we say and whilst i know nothing about it unless i'm flying online on things like dcs and shooting at them uh, for my other hobby uh, you know actually working on one it, it's really nice because you're getting again the mechanics of it of how it's working nice little touches with this one is that it's actually got the hydraulic ram system for the missile is all operational and actually works and maneuvers around and things but what should be a lot of fun on this one is the camo scheme we're going to be going for because we will be doing it in what well, it's actually this scheme uh, but it's with that nice because I quite like it with that light sort of beige buff color with the greens and the black it's it's such a contrast it works and I think it looks really really nice but also I'm really looking forward to weathering it as well so I'm going to be going having a go with things I haven't actually done before like the weathering pencils 
it's funny because I hit on them and I tell them they're a gimmick and they're and that, you know and get myself into trouble clearly. And then a few of you have pointed out that actually if you use them like this, this, and this, and you've given me some great ideas and some great feedbacks of like when they will come into their own and why you should get them and all things like that. So I'm going to give them a fair try. Uh, so when it comes to this one, we'll be doing obviously lots of things with oils, uh, lots of things with the weathering pencils, and seeing really if I can get it to work. Again, I am the biggest skeptic of them, but I'm you know always happy to give it a whirl. But you guys give me some great insights sites and tips and tricks of how to use them so I'll use some of that and see if I can recreate that type of effect as well so looking forward to getting onto the weathering one with that one it should be a lot of fun uh, thank you to everybody who joined us last night. Obviously, it was the team night we were on. We didn't have a single bug, glitch or anything. I think we've got there. It's one of those ones where if it's going to happen, it's totally out of our control, unless I forget to turn my microphone on or something. But generally, thank you very much for joining us. It was a great show last night. Don't forget, as always, you can catch all of these ones. Just go back and actually have a look uh, through the vlog system or obviously on the forum on the day show. I'll show you about that in a moment to make our way through. But generally, I want to get these two finished in the next week or two definitely so I can clear myself for the week before Telford because obviously Telford is fast approaching. I'm really hoping and you know me I don't do political at all but this entire Brexit debacle okay will be sorted out and done because I've been speaking to a few of you who are you know from Europe and things and you're contemplating not coming over don't be put off, honestly. It, I don't know how it's going to work yet. I don't think anybody in England actually does. Uh, but hopefully it won't affect for you guys coming over and things like that. But I've spoken to a few of you today and you're thinking perhaps miss it this year until it's a bit more settled next year. Because obviously if it does go through on the 31st, trust me, this is England. Nothing straightforward. We'll be talking about it still next year at this rate. But anyway, uh, hopefully that'll be done. But really, I've got Sanders coming in. I've got other projects. Uh, I intend to take some new demo equipment because as you guys see, the same models every year at Telford. I will take some new ones so I've got to do a lot of preparation work for that for doing demos and things like that at the show uh, for all you guys so I'm probably going to take the week before Telford away from this so these need to be done and sorted then we can do Telford and after Telford I'm going to have a quick little mini break and then come back from that and we'll be back at it as always anyway so lots of stuff going on so I thought if we have a quick look round. Uh, the actual uh, forum and site just to catch up obviously all this week if you want to find out what we've been up to obviously on Monday we are just down in here uh, we've got all the parts that we were working on down there on the SA11 so that was actually on Monday uh, that one's down in there and then on Tuesday we had uh, where's Tuesday here we go we had the actual Q&A show big long show on that one talking all your questions all those things and I answered all of those so if you want to catch up with them you can just click through there and get to that one Wednesday I forgot about it to be honest uh, me and Matt, as you might have known, it's the reason this is here. We've been working on the Buccaneers. And as, again, I made a stupid mistake and I've caused myself a little bit of work on the front end. I don't know why my cockpit, for some reason, is over to one side. Matt's isn't, so it's definitely me, not the kit. Okay, so there's something I've done. But I managed to get it all together quite nicely. I'm looking for it. What have I done with the kit? Uh, hold on, bear with me and I'll get it. Hold on, there it is. Ah, so... I've been working down in here. I'm slightly ahead of Matt. I think Matt's going to try and catch up a little bit. He says he goes down in here and it's gone. Where is it? Oh, it's over there. Sorry. Professional to the last. Sorry, it's over here. Keeping nice and safe out of the way. So this is the Buccaneer. This is the Airfix 70 second Buccaneer. Um, it's beautiful. It goes together really nicely. I've used a little bit of filler just down here at the back. To be honest with you, again, I think it's more me. It's all right, it's the, it's the seats, it's the seats. Nothing's come loose. Sorry, I had a rattle, but I placed the seats in there for safekeeping. But it looks absolutely fantastic. And some of you guys have finished these kits already. We saw them on the gallery last week at the end of the show. You'll see another one this week as well. They look really, really nice. So the big thing is, and I've got my money on it. <clears throat> No, I haven't, but I, you never know. But I would hope for a 70 second scale Wessex to go along with the Phantom and for the Buccaneer for the carrier scene, as we were saying, my money's on this because in all Air, Air Fix's box arts, you only see what is available. That isn't, so my money's on that. It won't happen. Anyway, uh, so yes, if you want to see this one, obviously you can watch it. Anybody can see it. It's open for the public to watch as well. Me and Matt working on this one. Obviously, the first sort of 15 minutes of the afternoon show, we talk about the latest kit releases, what's out. So from my point of view, this week I did a review on the B26 on the Invader. It's really, really nice to the point where I actually planning on building it now. Matt's not having this one back. 
I want to do it in this mottly scheme and make it really weathered. The great thing about ICM is, like I was saying in the actual review, is that they've gone right in the middle of where I think modelers want to be. As in, it's not basic, so you've got a little bit, obviously, full engine detail. Wheel wells are very nice, full interior detail, but it's not over-engineered. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could build it straight out of the box and have a really nice kit. But if you didn't want to mess around seeing all of this, you could build it very quickly without having all the detail in the engines, especially, you know, the insides as well. You could skip a lot of the painting thing and just end up with a very nice static model, you know, a nice overall for a quick build. Or, and that's the thing I love about ICM, you've got everything there where if you wanted to and without spending a fortune, you could really make something really nice out of this one. So I'm thinking maybe with a little bit of re-riveting work on this one, a little bit of lead wire and copper wire for some plumbing and stuff like that, a little bit of detail on the inside, a little bit of scratch building, you could end up with something absolutely stunning. Okay, so that's why I'm keeping this kit. So I'm planning on maybe next year doing a full-on build with this and using it as my base for going through. But the nice thing is you don't need to go out and buy aftermarket engines. You don't need to go out and get aftermarket cockpits and various things like it. You know, you might want to pop in some different gun barrels, to be honest. But generally, the rest of it, you could easily do it. And that's the nice thing. And that's why I say they're in the middle. Because if you want to do a quick build and kind of turn out with a beautiful kit, you've got that option. But if you want to go the whole hog and do a little bit of scratch building and turn it to that next level of upwards then that's the kit for you as well and it doesn't break the bank all right so that's the nice thing anyway full review for you is up on the site as well so you can grab that one the other one the phalanx long pointy stick is that the translation i don't know anyway uh again thank you to everybody who keeps sending me pictures of what the crews did to them i know this particular one's a bit like a duck or a penguin or whatever it is but a lot of you have sent me photos when you guys do them up of like r2d2 is another one that i've been sent and other different one schemes in there when they would like dress them up as all different characters like minions and stuff so this is the, the uh, phalanx gun system which funnily enough the uk has just bought the upgrade kits for as well so they're all going on uh the ship bang up today haven't heard of the manufacturer before they are quite new rpg models but i have to say for their early releases they're straight in and running there's no flash there's no sync marks there's no nasty bits there's quite a bit of photo etch involved with this one so if you like your photo etch you'll love it if you don't tough because uh, there really is no way around it. The vinyl stuff as well for the boots, for the gaiters, the things like that, and for the ammo feed are very nice, very crisply done. Nice stuff, you'll get away with it. So really you've got everything right out of the box to have a 135th scale something different. And let's face it, every now and again, I really do believe it's nice to build something completely off. So if you're not into sci-fi, you end up doing something sci-fi, you know, Star Wars kit or whatever. Or if you're an armor guy and then you decide, I know I'm going to build whatever off kilter, that you can do with these. They are absolutely fantastic. And I've said before, you can actually put this onto a trailer system because I think the army use it as well. So it is available on the back of a trailer as a gun system. I've seen a video with it and a power pack. So if you wanted to, you could actually incorporate that into something you may be building on a truck uh, something like along those lines so again don't think of it as just a gimmick you could you know put it in with other things you know a 135th back end of a ship diorama okay it might be a bit over the top so anyway that is up with you as well so the full review of both of those kits were available they went up on the wednesday show and then matt showed you a couple of things on the show as well uh, the latest kit releases and various things and we'll talk about that a little bit later on but yeah if you do want to catch up for parts one and two of the buccaneer they're in the live section as always down there on the forum but they're also a freely available to watch for free uh, actually on the actual vlog area of the flory model site as well so you just click in there and as you can see it's just down in here and if you click there you can see all about it and if you want to see those reviews they are just down in here or in here and remember if you want to see any of the other reviews as well that we actually do just pop along to the review section that's just down in here and we've got over i don't know 800 odd reviews in here now uh they're alphabetical uh, they're put in chronological order from the uploaded last section that is down in there and there's pages of them down in there or if you just want to go directly perhaps to a manufacturer so if you wanted to see the icm kits that we reviewed over the other years you just pop down in here and all those reviews and just click and go 
on those and you can see them just like that as well and again we've got loads and loads of reviews from all the major manufacturers and if you can't find one you're looking for it may be down here in miscellaneous section so if you click in here that's where you'll find the facts going because to be honest it's the first thing i've ever reviewed from rpg models so that's down in there but you've got obviously some of the other ones we did recently for like from the, the uh, panzer wagon things like that and other more limited uh, manufacturers shall we say all right so they're all down there as well tools and all the bits and pieces that go with it if you're looking for right where those are they are down in here in the tools and review sections and they're in there so we've got things like the pencils oh there we go and we've got obviously all paints and various things sorry it's taken a while to load through and all the different tools airbrushes you might imagine right the way through it does it goes on and on and on down in there just like that so if you want to catch up with any of those just pop to the review section down in there or just down to the vlog section here and you've got all the usual things and then obviously last night which brings you bang up to date so we had everybody on last night absolute riot as always and thank you to everybody who helps us take part with the show it's great having your interaction answering your questions and all things like that because without you guys well we wouldn't have a show it wouldn't be as simple as that so it's absolutely fantastic Anyway, what I thought we would do is pop over to the forum, seeing as it's Friday, and have a quick glance around to see what's going on at the moment. So obviously, uh, group builds and SIGs, it's a little bit quiet at the moment. We're into that sort of quiet time. Uh, I think everyone's heads down at the moment, tails up, getting ready for uh, Telford and things along those lines. We were talking about group builds. I think what we're going to do is in one of the December shows, um, I know we were talking maybe that we try and do something a little bit earlier, but we will we will see what we can do, shall we say. Next week's a little bit all over the place because you might remember I've got Andy and Matt coming down here on Monday. They're going to be three days down in here. We're going to have a special live show actually on uh, Tuesday night. So if you want to join us for Tuesday night, we'll be down in there doing the Q&A show and all things like that's normal. But Andy, John and Matt will be in here with the studio with me. All right, because we've got to sort out all various things to do with Telford. And you never know, we might even talk about group builds. God help us. Anyway, the ones that are going on at the moment, uh, we've got until the 25th of January next year. That seems really weird when you read it, it's 2020. Uh, we've got this one down in here, and this is obviously for the uh, Beaches to the Bulge group build. We've got lots of them starting to pull through now. So we've got 46 finished. So last one's up in here recently. We've got Nigel. Nice little one with the longest day. And this is the Valum. The Armstrong uh, ST Mark II. Look at that. That's like a love child of a B25 and something else, isn't it? I must admit, that's a new one of me. Never do. This is the one we were talking about because we were saying, I love the way you've done the invasion stripes onto it. They look how I imagine they would be. As in, they're not perfect lines. They're a little bit crude. But how you've done those is how I'd expect it. You know, that's roughly what, if somebody said to me, you know, they were put on in a hurry, they would look like that. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. So commendable job on that one. Looks absolutely fabulous. Love it with the background as well. With the international star cars look of 43. Wow. But yes, didn't it look like a love child? <laughs> that's what happens when bombers get together on a night out. So yes, very nicely done. Even on the black work underneath, never that easy on there. Cracking job on that one very nice indeed congratulations we've also got finished dotty may do you know what when this one first came out i thought the world was going to be absolutely flooded with these because actually it's a really nice kit just needs a little bit of you know work on it to bring it up and there we go that just shows so sorry this was tom Tom's done an absolute stunning job on there. Having working with the actual metal finish at the moment, you can see he's done a beautiful job recreating that, going right the way through. Decals have all gone down, no problems at all with that. Looking very, very fine indeed. Gorgeous work. Love the way you've done the sort of aluminium. This is the, what I'm trying to do. <laughs> No pressure, eh? Uh, but yeah, very nice job on that one, right the way through. I.e., it's got the shine. You see it in the light, it's got the shine, but the rest of it looks quite flat. That's what I'm going to try and do with mine as well, because I like that look. Very, very nice. Cracking job. Very nice work on that indeed. And there she is. Very own Dottie Mae. Sat there doing her bit. I really must get my... I've got the actual print for this and the various things, so I need to get mine sort of you know framed up very nice job cool very nice job on that tom well done congratulations and we've got a uh, 109 from uh sorry this is brett very nice indeed 
See, I do like the 109. It's got that sort of classic. I know people say about the Spitfire and the stuff, and I suppose because it, it's a little bit more chiselled, the 109, shall we say. Very cool. Very nice. Nice weathering as well with all the stuff that's going on with this one. Beautiful work. Very, very nice indeed. And that worm camo down the back end as well. Beautiful. Very, very cool. Good looking aircraft. Nice clean photos as well. So congratulations. Very nice job on that one indeed. Very cool. Right. What else we got? Now we've also got, uh, we've got Keith. And he's finished a Skytrain. A diorama. Look at that. Very nice indeed. <laughs> I look like a goal from there. I look like playing football. But there we go. All ready to take the actual uh, gl um, the uh, glider in tow. That's what I'm trying to say. Very nice indeed. Again, it's the little things in the background with the car and the gate. It's what makes them up. Very cool. And actually, the, the stand works. Like I often say, that you either make them, hide them, or make a feature out of them. I think that works. Very nice job. Well done, Keith. That's absolutely gorgeous on that one. Okay. And we've got an Airfix a Spitfire photo reconnaissance. Uh, so this is the Mark what, 14. My Roman numerals are coming to me. So very nice in the P uh, photo reconnaissance blue, PR blue. Very nice. So this is a Griffin powered version, I do believe, with the later mark of uh, Spitfires. Very cool. With a nice work there with the actual good clean photographic areas, as you can see. In fact, that's a good clean build all over, to be honest. Very nice indeed. So congratulations to Steve. Well done, Steve. Absolutely lovely work one. Okay, should we just have two more? Oh, another diorama, an explosive diorama from uh, Richard. So we've got here a tiger waiting in ambush and it's just knocked out. Is that a crocodile? Have we got a description? Not really. Okay. Guys, when you finish him, say about, we was on about the description. We need to have the manufacturers of the various things and any tools and various bits you used as well. Just helps with the uh, the actual overall and a link then to your actual build as well. Really nice using the old fiber uh, for the smoke and for the explosion. And we've actually got even got a bent anti-tank gun down there as well. There's a lot going on in here. So yeah, really very nice indeed. Hiding in the hedges for an ambush. Very nice indeed. Congratulations on that one, Richard. Lovely job. Okay, so. Uh, right, Rich has obviously put up a few different ones for the various things, so we've sort of been through that. So there you go, guys. You can find out all about it that way. And I assume that's what he's done there. And that's just picked this one out here for today. Cows. Mind the cows. See, I must admit, I do prefer the Razorback Thunderbolt. It looks positively brilliant. It looks more chiselled than the bubble top one. But the thing that takes my eye is this poor Spitfire over here look who's actually really having a bad day because it looks like he's had his wings removed. He's obviously can't come in for one of those nice landings without wheels. Never mind. Anyway, onto the build. That's beautiful. Stunning work. Another very nice job on the metal finish. Beautiful work right the way through. It's lovely how you've actually got it where the white isn't right in your face. It's worn down to look very much like the metal finish, but also the way that all of your marking and your weathering goes right the way through everything. So it's going through the decals with the stencils and everything else, and then through the actual, you know, the model. So everything is in one. Your eye is all over. I often talk about how the scale effect is driven by the amount that you look all over it. And I just don't know where to look. So you're looking down in here, you're looking in here, you've got the engine. Yeah, no, it is. It's literally one of those ones you're absolutely everywhere with. Fantastic, beautiful work. That massive propeller that they have. But there we go, looking right into it there. You can see all the work that's gone in. Beautiful work down in the cockpit as well. Very, very nice indeed. A few of the others, and he got a third. You were robbed. I don't know who that is. But <laughs> Change that over. 
<laughs> yeah, you were robbed, clearly. I think you deserve a bit more than a third. I would have given you a first. It's fine. Okay. Right, so there we go. Anyway, there's plenty to see in there, guys. Don't forget, we will have a full reveal build and all the rest of it will make an entire show when that does finally come to the end next year. So again, you've got loads of you on. There's 152 currently going on with that one. Remember, and I haven't got one here, uh, everybody who finishes, you're all eligible and you will be sent a medal free of charge by me uh, here at Flory Models as a thank you for all your hard work that you've put into this one. Uh, next up, we've got until the end of the year on this one, till the 31st of December, we've got the actual Italian job. For some reason, it's really very, very quiet because no one's finished since the last time we looked. But there is 30 of you on the go there. Basically, anything Italian. It doesn't have to be cars. It can be military, Air Force, Army, Navy, whatever you want to do from anything from Italy day one through to present day. So it's not like it's wars or anything else like that. Anything you want to do, as long as it's Italian, as in it's in Italian markings or it's Italian made, it counts. It's as simple as that on that one. So lots and lots of various things to go through on that one as well. So there's plenty of things to go on there. Uh, as always, we want to have a quick look at the actual PM store to see what they've got in new. You might remember if you were with us on uh, Wednesday or last night, Matt was talking about various kits that he's had in. We've got a lot of Dragon in, we've got a lot of other kits coming in, and we've got a lot of specials coming up probably over the weekend, or if not, it'll be on Monday, okay? Matt's going to be coming down here on Monday, so what we're probably going to do is make a big fuss of it on Tuesday on the live show, but we've got a lot of special deals, and whilst he was out the other day, he did pick up some absolute gems. So we can see, if you remember, this is that uh, Low Rider or the uh, XV1600 Custom. Tamiya bike, 112 scale, looks absolutely fantastic. Old school, the Lancia, this is the LC2. Okay, again, well, these olden but golden kits coming through again. There's that fantastic B26. I absolutely love everybody to rush out and buy it. It's great. Uh, the lovely and finally arrived, even though it is pretty much missed the boat on this one, but uh, it is for the uh, F104, the Starfighter, uh, for the Luftwaffe marking version. The Buccaneers, we got them back in. As fast as we get them in, they sell out. So we've got another couple of cases in, so they're back in stock again. Uh, so if you want to grab yourself a Buccaneer and join me and Matt and catch up with us and things like that, we'd love to have you along as always. Or if not, you can catch us up at any time as well on the catch-up shows. So down in there is that one. A couple of other ones making it about X Fujami stuff, which obviously Italy seems to be releasing a lot of these days. We've got the MiG-21. They are nice kits, to be honest. Fantastic kit as well. Olden but golden again. We've got the 72nd H3. Uh, Three, uh, which is the Sea King. Obviously, I think they're cashing in on the Apollo anniversary or as was, so we got that one down there as well. Other one up as well, it's the 135th scale uh, M42 Duster, uh, complete with the figures that one's in. We've got the Rotorcraft, we spoke about that one on the show last night as well. And we've got another version now of, uh, I can't pronounce it, the Tribule Fluger, I think it was or something I called it. Uh, you might remember I did the review of the normal version, they've now released the Night Fighter version. Again, I know it's a little bit whiffy, but it's one of those things. It's quite a nice one still to do. Remember Remember, you catch all the usual store stuff, so paints, glues, all stuff like that from the actual PM store, as always. They are down in there. Just pick on your subject, click on it, and away you go. As simple as that. And that was our week. Another really, really busy week. Next week's going to be absolutely mad, because I say I've got Matt and I've got all the guys down here for the first part of the week. So not a lot will be done, but we'll be talking a lot to you and catching up with them live on the shows as always. So they'll be down here. And then hopefully by next week, we'll have a little bit of paint or definitely primer down here onto our um, book system, missile system. And obviously, hopefully we'll be just finishing off, or if not very, very close to it, our actual Sabre Jet as well. So really looking forward to doing that one. As always, being on a Friday, I'm going to leave you with your great work from the gallery. So until Monday, guys, happy modeling. Take care. I was not ready to fall in like I'm wasted.